Welcome to this video on an exciting technology that has the potential to make a huge dent in climate change and desertification. We will be looking at the problem of freshwater scarcity and one sure shot method to reverse it. This channel Synergy Files is a portal for engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe to the channel to get updates for our latest videos. We are living in an era where the effects of climate change are being felt, temperatures are getting hotter, heat waves are getting more frequent, precipitation patterns are shifting. This coupled with the increased demand due to rising population has put a huge strain on natural resources and in particular water. Fresh water is getting scarce. Its shortage already affects every continent and around 2.8 billion people around the world at least once a month every year. More than 1.2 billion people lack access to clean drinking water. A recent example is the turmoil in Cape Town, a city that was brought to its knees because of the shortage of water. This shortage of water became chronic after years of drought in the region. Experts have predicted similar situation to occur in major cities around the world. Ironically, many of these population centers are coastal cities. Access to water isn't a problem, but to portable water is. It should be noted that seawater can have salinity of up to 35,000 parts per million or ppm. While the water that can be used for drinking has a range of salinity from 200 to 1000 ppm. In the US, the official limit of dissolved salt for classification as fresh water is 1000 ppm whereas drinkable water is restricted to 500 parts per million. Seawater desalination therefore holds the key for treating one of the manifestation of climate change that is freshwater shortage. But in this video, we will go further and discuss the cure of climate change by the effective use of desalinated water. Climate change has not only made water scarce, but is also adding to desertification. The deserts are increasing and are encroaching prairies and pasture lands year on year. Stopping desertification is the key to reversing climate change. Studies have shown that the more vegetation, the more rainfall it attracts. This is one reason why rainforests receive huge amount of annual rainfall. So now let's talk about the silver bullet that is the solution to climate change. In the 1980s, British designer Charlie Payton came up with the idea of using seawater in arid regions not only to produce desalinated water but to grow food from it. And thus emerged the technology called seawater greenhouse. The name is very self-explanatory and through this simple yet effective setup, crops of vegetables have been harvested in the harshest of deserts. The technology has proven itself in many corners around the world, from sun-kissed Tenerife to Dust Bowl of Somaliland, to yield produce using seawater alone. Over the years, Charlie and his organization Seawater Greenhouse Limited has been able to fine-tune their technology. They can now accurately predict the growing condition around the year through meteorological data and use it to optimize plant growth. The way this technology works is very natural and uncomplicated. Salt water is pumped from the sea and is dropped over corrugated cardboard sheet. Air is then drawn through this cardboard sheet into the greenhouse. This allows the water running down the cardboard to evaporate and cool the incoming air. This cool moist air reduces the temperature of the greenhouse and also reduces the need for plants to transpire water, thus creating a perfect environment for plants to flourish by taking the edge off the hot environment as well locally in the open. The moisture is then drawn out of the greenhouse and as it leaves, it is passed over a metallic plate. This metallic plate is kept cold by circulating cold water that has been pumped from deep sea. As the moisture leaves, it deposits its water vapor over the metal plate. This water is distilled water devoid of any salinity and is fed to the plants through drip feed. According to Charlie Payton, the water from the sea is also full of nutrients, many of which the plant need. Water rich in salt is collected at the bottom of corrugated cardboard sheet. This setup requires minimal maintenance and can be fully automated using today's technology. Interestingly, this concept has been taken up a notch in Australia from being just experimental to commercial. Sundrop Farms 
near Port Augusta, South Australia, has within a short period of three years been able to turn over crops of tomatoes that today make up 15% of Australian demand, 17,000 tons to be precise, and their aim is to take the yield up to 20% of the total Australian demand in the near future. They were able to do this in an area that has minimal precipitation and in a land that was barren. Conventional farming wisdom suggests that agricultural land is most fertile near the banks of river where it gets constantly enriched by silty soil flowing downstream. With seawater greenhouse, the requirement of being near a freshwater source is eliminated, thus making many barren places on earth cultivable. Seawater greenhouse also creates an oasis effect. The microclimate it creates helps vegetation to spring out in the surrounding. The oasis effect is evident from these pictures. The excess humidity from this seawater greenhouse has resulted in lush vegetation in the surrounding just after two years of its operation. If the seawater greenhouse technology is supplemented with water box technology, then huge artificial oasis can be created. Note that trees planted in biodegradable water boxes have more than 80% survival rate even in arid environments. The seawater greenhouse will remain the central hub and the seed to sprout vegetation. And through its application over large areas, it is anticipated that the local climate of the terrain will slowly transform because of a natural positive feedback loop. It should be noted that in very hot climates, the growth of trees provides a shade which fosters more growth. The more the vegetation, the more it increases the chance of rainfall, which leads to even more vegetation. If the selected sites have a raised landform towards the western side like a hill, then this also aids the oasis effect. The energy for pumping and circulating water can be easily managed through a local solar PV system. And so there is no requirement of electrical infrastructure to be present at the site for the technology to work. It is almost a 100% self-sustaining system with the occasional need for stocking soil with fertilizer. The desalination plant at Sundrop Farm converts a million liter of water each day into fresh water. The desalination technique used at Sundrop Farms is slightly different to the one mentioned earlier in seawater greenhouse. Reverse osmosis technology is well established and can be used to great effect. However, despite the seemingly huge figure of the water desalinated as sundrop farms in Australia, it would have amounted to little if it was used for agriculture in the open. It is known that almost 70% of fresh water around the world is used up by conventional farming. In many countries, the figure rises to 90%. More than 60% of this water fed to plants gets wasted through runoffs and evapotranspiration. With a rising population, we cannot afford the luxury of conventional farming anymore. It is for this reason new farming methods are evolving that reduce the usage of fresh water by 90%. Hydroponics and drip feeding are allowing many areas that were considered unimaginable for producing food to become more productive than conventional farms. We have to increase awareness about this technology, particularly in developing countries which are being hit hard by climate change. The governments need to take a note of seawater greenhouse and how it can transform not only their local climate and ecology, but also supplement their economy with produce. Mega cities like Karachi have started feeling the pinch of water shortage and these cities should invest heavily in this technology, particularly in coastal outskirts of the city. There is an unimaginable amount of power in the sun, and we have to learn to use this to our advantage. And with this, one of our videos on reversing climate change comes to an end. We will be posting further videos on this topic, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention.